First of all, there's no question that Evan Roberts was a man of God who the Lord used at that time. There was an authentic move of God's spirit in the valleys where the collieries are, the mining villages of Wales. It actually did happen. But it was over within a year and a half. It, less, it lasted less than one and a half years. It was less than 18 months, probably about 15 to 16 months, and then it was largely over. Most people in Wales today have never even heard of Evan Roberts or have no knowledge or recollection of these revivals that took place in these valleys. It had no long-term impact on the country, spiritually or morally, or at least very, very little. <clears throat> there were Pentecostal movements and Pentecostal churches that sprung up in Wales, but those have largely fizzled as well. Wales today is a very needy country. The last time there was a revival in Wales, however, a major work of God was certainly with Evan Roberts. But Jesus never said to make converts. He said to make disciples. Evan Roberts <clears throat> and the revivals that took place in Wales are a classic example of what happens when evangelism is separated from discipleship. I see people do this today. There are many people who are evangelists who have a sincere desire to see people saved. And they will compromise or overlook doctrine, discipleship, in the name of seeing more people saved, of seeing the gospel preached, of seeing souls evangelized, of, of, of getting people even baptized, number counting sometimes, filling stadiums. One person who's fallen into this era, in my view, is Greg Laurie. He will compromise with things that are downright wrong, such as Hillsong, uh, in the name of evangelism. He'll get in bed with a false teacher like Rick Warren, a deceiver, in the name of evangelism. Once evangelism becomes uncoupled from discipleship, you wind up with what you had in Wales with Evan Roberts, a big nothing. Maybe individuals were saved, but little long-term ramification for Christ in the longer term. It just doesn't work. When you have evangelism, you must have discipleship. Discipleship fundamentally requires solid scriptural doctrine. Now, I believe radically in evangelism, but I also believe in discipleship. As we always say, evangelism minus discipleship equals zero. Evan Roberts did not understand the need or importance for discipleship as an emphasis. It came and it went. It was unfortunately a flash in the pan. Nonetheless, although it was a proverbial flash in the pan, I do not deny it was a move of God's spirit initially. I do not deny that people were saved. It's just that it did not follow the direction of Jesus, the instruction of Jesus, to make converts. They were only interested largely in making disciples. There are all kinds of legends and stories that go back to Welsh church lore concerning what happened. For instance, the miners would curse and swear at the uh, pack horses who would pull the uh, carts of coal out of the collieries and out of the mine shafts to get them to move. And because the, the Miners had gotten saved and become Christians. They stopped cursing and swearing so they couldn't get the horses to move anymore. Stories like this, that the police had nothing to do with direct traffic to and from the churches. Well, if that is true, if those things are true, and I suppose there may be a degree of truth in those things, <clears throat> it was a fad. <clears throat> That's all it was, was a fad. It had no long-term ramifications. Concerning Jesse Penn Lewis, it was not so much what Jesse Penn Lewis wrote in War on the Saints. It was the inordinate amount of emphasis placed upon it. There's always two dangers. One is overlooking the hand of Satan. The other is overemphasizing it. It was not simply Evan Roberts who was some way influenced by Jesse Penn Lewis. In fact, the influence of Jesse Penn Lewis on, on Evan Roberts was relatively minor compared to the um, influence that Jesse Penn Lewis had on the Chinese believer, Watchman Nee. 
Now, I know people who knew Watchman Nee. Stephen Kong knew Watchman Nee. Dr. Joshua Chu knew Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee was indeed a brother. His books are absolutely brilliant for new believers. Not I, but Christ, Love Not the World, A Normal Christian Life. These books are certainly ordained of God. They explain the gospel and they explain the Christian life impeccably well for young believers. No doubt, no question that God blessed and used Watchman Nee. But there's also no doubt that his later writings became peppered with things that were not scripturally balanced. Things that we read in the spiritual man. He warns about passivity, but he sort of gets into a kind of passivity that has even an incipient influence of, of Oriental Gnosticism. Slightly. He was not a Gnostic by any means. Don't get me wrong, he was a brother in faith. But he was not perfect. He made his errors. And one of the sources of his errors was giving an inordinate amount of emphasis to the influence of Jesse Penn Lewis. It's not so much that what Jesse Penn Lewis said was wrong. It's the amount of emphasis placed on demonology. It helped to spawn things incipiently later on that were ridiculous. There was a book, I believe, called Pigs in the Parlor. Uh, and there are manuals for casting demons out of the toaster and things of this nature when it was malfunctioning. Things that became absurd. Well, the seminal root of this kind of thinking, in part, came from Jesse Penn Lewis. I do not say people should not read Jesse Penn Lewis' War on the Saints, but it is not a book for new believers. It's for the older in Christ who are more discerning, because it could give a negative influence as well as a positive one. Again, <clears throat> it is an unbalanced emphasis on demonology which is in no way to discount the absolute essential importance of looking out for the hands of Satan and the wiles of the devil. But there is a balance. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print, the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Parpezzo. Parpezzo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture. The snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, 
Shadows of the Beast, and Hot Paints Off. All available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.